Hello and welcome to another video and today as you can see we're on MotoGP19 and once again and today we're here for another experiment slash challenge so we are going to go new game here if we go on to Moto2 and have a look you've got all your normal riders you can see Mike D'Amelio you think what's going on I've accidentally pressed showroom but yeah we can have a look at him with those Dunlop tyres if you go to custom rider you'll also see if you've gone oh yeah she's gone to the next page for this interesting and uh, you can see the mock VDS Moto E bike there, so we can click on that. And today we are doing Moto 2 versus Moto E. I tried it with Moto 3 and it was okay, but the tyres were just getting so hot it was ridiculous because obviously, you know, a Moto 3 bike is so light and a Moto E bike is so heavy, it's loading the Moto 3 tyres. They were just getting so hot and it was impossible to ride after a few corners, so it was not fair to so shine. So I don't know what track to do here. Probably should do uh, Bruno since it's the next track, but. I don't really want to, I think it's a bit too long maybe for that, so I'll try and do somewhere that might be a bit cooler. Mm, Austin's also pretty long, I don't know, it's hard to pick a track here. Could, for, could go with Catalonia, I guess. Yeah, let's go with Catalonia. So we'll go with that and uh, hopefully you know, it all works out fine. So yeah, like I said, I was originally planning to, uh, planning to do this with Moto3, but there was some problems, so hopefully uh, it's not so bad with Moto2. I'm still going to go with the hard hard just to keep the tyre you know, wear down and tyre heat down as well but the tyres would get so hot I couldn't even ride around the corner so the rear would just slide out from underneath me when I was going around the corner off the throttle of the as well we're now coming from the starting it was grid, even worse, where everything so. seems ready it's always difficult to predict the results of a Moto2 race but the riders we're seeing right now definitely seem to be the favourites so D'Amelio is actually on pole so fair play to D'Amelio Marquez in second so let's just head straight into it and get a Get off the line here. So you can't accelerate until after the lights have gone out. Even if you hold the clutch in, because otherwise you just jump start instantly, even with the clutch. So it looks like we have a lot less power than them, it seems. There's been a big crash ahead with Demelio and Ben Chinado. We had caught up Demelio there. But yes, it certainly seems we have a, a lot less power than them. Well, my brakes did not work then, did they? No, they did not. Okay, so I'm still in front of Ben Schneider. Probably should have done this at uh, Saxon Ring. The bike feels very different than it did in Moto3. It feels a bit more manageable though. Because it's probably around, well it's not, it's still way too light, I would say, as a Moto2 bike. It's probably still like a really heavy Moto2 bike. So you can see the rear tyre is still getting pretty worn. But, uh, I can't quite get the power down. Although we are catching up to the guys in front, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. So let's see if we, uh, see if we can make any inroads on them. We're keeping Ben Schneider behind for now. The rear tyre is actually starting to get a bit hot now. That could be also down to my style a little bit because uh, it's not ridiculously hot, it's just pretty hot. And the AI are losing time it seems, so they were gaining the time uh, off the line. So their acceleration probably seems to be better, so they'll probably get away on the straight again. But it seems like they're not too good through the corners. So it's something to note. But catching up to oh, what is Bezeki doing? I've just hit Bezeki. Lowe's is doing something weird as well. I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, I don't feel like it's a side effect of the Moto E mod, but I guess it could be. Uh, unless Master had made a bit of a, a bit of a mistake uh, with some of the some of the files for the AI path in this new update. Because I think there's been a new update or something. So. That's what I heard earlier, unless it's just on Xbox, I don't know. I heard people talking about the fact there was a new update in an uh, Xbox chat earlier. So up towards the line we go. 202, which isn't too bad because then we crashed as well, and also we have a lot less power than these boys. We hit the brakes for turn one. So Ben Schneider closes up on the brakes as well, see they have more, a lot more engine brake, and they could use the gears to engine brake, whereas it's just uh, artificial engine braking really uh, on this Moto E bike and obviously you could, there's no gears to use for it so it just so it's not great so you have to brake quite early compared to where you'd probably want to ideally well I'm not sure who is in front of us, we do seem to be making some inroads on them I think, I don't know really but probably should have done this at Saxon, I think I might have said that already but uh, I, haven't, I don't think it would be obviously this much of a Disparency because uh, I thought we were like clearly quicker than the Moto3s, like very much. 
a lot quicker, but I guess we're probably in the middle ground between the two. So we are closing up on shabby car to lose here. And the front tyre is actually a lot, well actually it's cooler, but in terms of its critical temperature, it's a lot higher because it's in the red. So obviously the, the rear tyre is supposed to get hotter than the front, so a hot rear isn't as bad as a hot front. And they're doing the same thing again. Oh, that's Demelio going slow on the racing line this time. So we have now lapped Demelio. We are closing up to, is this Eki Pratama in front of us? It is Eki Pratama. So we're closing up to Dimas here. A bit of a screen freezer. To be honest, all in all, it seems like there's been a lot less screen freezers on this game. So I used to get them quite a bit on MotoGP 18, whereas uh, even though my computer could easily run the game and it ran in 60 otherwise, but on this game I don't seem to be getting any. So it's good. It's not going to be. I don't think it's going to be fastest up the race or anything like that, is it? Because uh, I'm only just catching the people at the back, so the guys at the front are going to be lapping a bit quicker. Although we have got away from Ben Schneider quite a bit, and he didn't even close up on the brakes there like he did on the previous lap. So we actually have got a pretty decent pace here. So we are 2.1 seconds behind Dimaseki Pratama in front of us. So perhaps we can have a look at trying to get him. In fact, look, the rear tyre is actually starting to get into a pretty manageable temperature again now. It seems to be into this section that they lose a lot of time. I've gone in really hot. I've managed to keep that out of the grass though, so that's probably the most important part there. I can hear that there are people coming from behind. I think it's probably Sam Lowe's that's making the comeback. Because uh, I'd assume he'd, he'd probably be quicker than Ben Schneider in terms of his AI level. So uh, he would be closing up to Ben Schneider and then also probably me as well. Obviously because I'm on a very underpowered machine. Oh, lost the rear though. That could cost us a position to Ben Schneider. That does look like it's Lowe's in the background. So we're not going to catch it to Pratama now. I've gone really way too... Yeah, I fell off. I went way too late. It was, in fact, Lowe's. So we're going to be 30 seconds out of 34. So we are going to beat somebody that's a Moto 2 rider. But yeah, not a very successful challenge or experiment, that's for sure. But it's uh, something fun to try. I might try it again, maybe on Saxon Ring, like I said, where the power obviously isn't such a big big problem, and it's more about the corner speed. I could turn the AI difficulty. I could try it somewhere like Texas, where the AI are just quite poor. That could be fun. Uh, definitely give it a go, because the tyre wear seems pretty manageable, so uh, it wouldn't be too bad to do a long race. But over the line we go, he's going to be a bit disappointed, because it's going to be a top-tier team, isn't it? Well, we wait but we for beat the our team, mate. To take us to Park Fermi to meet the stars of the race. Let's take a quick look at the Moto 2 class final ranking. So if you actually look at the fastest laps, I was actually I actually had a faster lap than Kylo and Paui, and also Stephen Odendahl. So I was catching those guys in front of me. Uh, fastest apparently to Demelio, 46.8. Right, even though it's two minutes 44 off the pace and going around about two mile an hour. So uh, yeah, it's uh, always an interesting sort of. Um, <laughs> Always a little bit interesting there when that kind of thing happens, but I suppose that's just a, the, AI, the game simulating the AI time. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy that one. Uh, like I said, I will be happy to do this on other tracks. Maybe, you know, I could do Moto2 versus MotoGP, things like that. Although that one, I've tried that in the past, it's very unbalanced, so they can't even keep, like, it was more unbalanced than this. Uh, obviously, I could turn the AI down for these things as well, although, you know, it's not really so much of a challenge if you do that but to actually balance the playing field a little bit I guess could be interesting but yeah like I said I hope you did enjoy that one I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I shall see you in the next one